Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, welcome to Whimsical Wednesday. I'm Tracy with Tracy's Fancy, and I am live here on what is this little pop up? I'm live here on the Dixie Bell page for Whimsical Wednesday. We meet here every single Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time for uh, my paint session. And we call it Whimsical Wednesday because my style of painting is usually, um, although it's it's varied lately, um, but my favorite style of painting is very, very whimsical. Bold colors, as you can see behind me, um, lots of patterns, uh, painted patterns, um, like stripes and harlequin and checks, things of that nature. And I love, love, love super gaudy furniture. <laughs> like this piece back here behind me, this headboard. So we started this last Wednesday. We most talked about design last Wednesday and um, so I thought that I might have this finished before I came on with you guys tonight but I fell the very next morning after we were live here last week I fell down some stairs at my daughter's house onto a cement floor and I hurt my back and um, was out pretty pretty much out of commission until the last couple days and I'm doing great thank you all very much I broke my toe um, in the fall <laughs> But I'm doing better. I even have I have a uh, I have a shoe on. I have a tennis shoe on. So I am here with you straight off the track and field. We I just left my daughter's track meet. It's freezing cold up for me outside. Jasmine's on. There we go. Hello. Thank you guys for saying hello. Uh, no one had said hello yet. So thank you, Jasmine, for being with us. Jasmine is with Dixie Bell Paint Company, and she is here during this entire live to answer questions for you guys. If y'all have any questions, if you're new to painting, we would love to know if you're new. Just type in your questions, we'll see them. Uh, I'll try to answer them. Sometimes other painters are on here and they can answer as well. And uh, Jasmine will certainly answer any questions that you have. So I'm a brand ambassador, I own my own painting company, but um, Tracy's Fancy, I would love if you would follow me there on Facebook or Instagram. But I work very closely with Dixabelle along with several other brand ambassadors and content creators and their retailers that we have across the country. Uh, and we do live videos um, all, all day, every day, all week. So thank you guys. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are all so sweet. Yeah, uh, I it hurt. It, it's cement steps and a cement landing. Um, and I was barefooted and I feel like I left three of my toes on the on a step, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like it. So please tell us where you are tuning in from. Um, we are going to just go ahead and get started painting right now. Um, so what I did was earlier today, like I said, I was kind of on the fly. I don't know if you saw my post earlier. I barely had time to get out here, but I really, really wanted to get out here and get at least the base coat on this side of the bed so that you could see what it looks like right here. And then we are gonna paint, um, oh, we've got someone, Valerie from, hello, Miss Valerie. Hi there, how are you? Nina, <laughs> Nina, you're fine, girl, you're fine. But just stay in touch with me, that's all, that's all, good. This, by the way, you guys, is Nina's bed. She's having PayPal issues, but this is Nina's bed. And we're, we're uh, we got the base coat down, Nina, don't freak out. I know you want some cobalt blue on there. We're gonna get that on there for you. But right now we've got antebellum blue going. Molly's Creations, Mr. Gary's on right now. Gary's the one who actually chose the colors um, for the bed last week. So he had mentioned, this one's not been blended. This one over here has. Um, he had mentioned using antebellum blue, cobalt blue, and mermaid tail. So these are my three colors right here. Let me turn the jars around so you can see. These are the three colors. This is antebellum blue, this is cobalt blue, and this is mermaid tail. And we had these center areas, right? Or these on, on each side, this sort of like a, I don't know what you call this, like a panel with a really funny shape. And so this is just the, the base part of a blend that needs to be blended. And then this one over here has been blended, but it's not showing up real super well. But I think, hi everybody, hi Michelle, hi Katie. I think once we start adding this, when you, when you work on a piece like this, especially a piece that has a lot of carvings, you wanna get just, you just wanna get the whole thing covered in a color. So. We want to cover this yellow up, and that's what I'm going to do with you tonight, all right? And to give you some tips on how to paint heavily carved furniture, because as you can see, hi, Joe. Hi there. Thanks for watching tonight, hon. Um, you can see that there's super heavy carving right in here, and yeah, it'd be great if I used a sprayer. I have two sprayers, 
and I don't like to use sprayers. I just don't like it. I don't, I don't have an area set up for spraying. Um, I don't live out in the country where I can spray out in the trees. Um, I, I've done spraying in the past. Uh, I had a, a section of my garage with sheet, you know, plastic sheeting. I just don't enjoy it. I like brush painting, especially at the end of the day when everything has settled, like tonight, once my, you know, my kids are down and I'm out here by myself, I like to just sort of lose myself and especially this heavily carved stuff, but it drives a lot of people crazy. So I have a few little tips for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is a brand new jar of antebellum. I used the rest of my jar over there. So we did blend this one area right here, but you can barely see it. I mean, you really, really, you really can't see it. You can see like a little bit of a highlighted area. Maybe if I bring the light over here a little bit better. There you go, you can see it, right? Looks a little funny. It looks almost like someone with a black eye to me. So I'm not sure we'll keep it. I'm not real worried about that part right now. Hi, Karen. Hi, Mara from Canada. Yay! We are really seriously officially going to Canada. Oh, I have some good news for you guys. Okay, I have a couple things to tell y'all while I open this jar of paint. When you order from Dixie Bell, by the way, you can use my link. It's right up at the top of the page. You can get these colors that we're using. You can order anything you want um, from my link. Just click the link. You can add it to cart and um, you can purchase. If you also want to go to DixieBell.com, DixieBellPaint.com um, and go to their website, and in the, uh, I believe it's the top right, it says find a retailer and you can put your zip code in and it will tell you that where your nearest retailer is. They're all over the country. Um, and you can actually go to a retailer and choose your colors in person if you like to do that better. Um, anyway, it comes with a seal on it. They pack things like crazy. You've never seen so much bubble wrap in your life. Um, and then when you open the jar, it will actually have a white seal on it as well. Um, so it's, well, it actually stuck to the top. It's usually on top of the jar. It's inside here. You can see the white edge and it peels off. So, um, this is a 16 ounce jar right here. This is a 16 ounce. All right. Thank you, Diane. I love it too. Um, okay. So this is what I have to tell you and I can tell you this. I'm going to start painting and then I'll start talking to y'all. So this is the new French tip brushes love 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 them love them for blending small areas especially this area like right here but it's also really really good for getting into tight smaller places it, and because the bristles are uh, layered like that do you see how they go and they make a tip so they're i don't even know what you call that cut in i don't even know what you call what do you call that like feathered you know it's what do you what do you call that Someone help me here. I'm like drawing an absolute and total blank. All my Texas folks here from San Angelo. Um, this works really, really well getting in carved areas. So if you are painting, hello, AG Designs. If you are painting um, an area that has a lot of carving, this works really, really, really good for you. Tapered, thank you, Angela. Oh, live videos. They make me just go like, they just make me have brain farts. It's terrible. So tapered edge for heavily carved area, that's tip number one, all right? Pro tip number one. I have painted carved areas, carved furniture for years and years and years, and I'm not used to brush like this. So this made it a lot easier for me. So I wanna tell you a couple of things. Um, uh, I do a lot of pouncing. I call this pouncing, all right? I'm gonna bring y'all in a little bit closer. Y'all just aren't quite close enough. Hold on. Let me bring y'all in a little bit closer. There we go. Bring our light around. There we go. There we go. All right, so I do a lot of pouncing when I'm working in these areas like this. So I wanna show you, I'm just gonna start talking and painting. I don't think much, I just do a lot of pouncing and I work real hard and real fast. So a lot of people that are new to painting, they're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna paint, you know, and they're like, oh, here we go, and they're brushing, and they're like, oh, I gotta get up in there, and they spend all their time to cover that whole area. No, okay, all these individual holes, we aren't even worrying about those individual holes. It's called French tip, French tip, and you can give if you, uh, they're on Dixie Bell's website, if you, oh, thank you, thank you, Jasmine, for answering that. The 16 ounce jar right here covers 75 square feet. Um, you can get them with the link in my, uh, they're very affordable. They work really well. They've been, these have been already used many, many times. They wash up really well. Uh, so what was I going to tell you? So I don't worry about the holes. I don't do any, I'm not, I'm just laying a base coat down y'all. I'm not trying to be fancy and, and pretty. I just pounce 
I'm getting it nice and covered. Also, did you notice that this has a really high shine on it? This piece has a super high shine. So you would maybe ask me, why did I not use Slick Stick? Some people might wanna know why I didn't use Slick Stick. Slick Stick is a product that Dixie Belle carries for ultra slick surfaces that you need a little more tooth or grit in order to get the paint to adhere uh, really well. And to me, it, yes, I could have benefited from it, but it wasn't absolutely necessary. I had already painted these nightstands and done really well with that, and I just knew that I didn't need it, so I just alleviated that step. Um, I probably will turn my back to you guys. I've got a microphone on, so you should be able to hear me okay. Um, Karen, you know what? I, so, Jasmine, can you tell her how much the French tip brushes are? I actually did look it up, and I don't remember, and I don't want to give the wrong price but I did look it up because I just wrote a blog about it. I just wrote, I love them so much that I wrote a blog about just the French tip brush. It's coming out not this Sunday, but next. I wrote ahead because I'll be traveling. Um, I write a blog every single week, you guys, um, on my website, tracysfancy.com. Um, this headboard will be blogged about and um, I always give all you know my tips and information and lots of pretty pictures. And these are natural bristle brushes, so sometimes you might have a little bit of shedding when you first start using them. So I just had a couple bristles come off, but that's that's what that is just something that you get with a natural bristle brush. Natural bristle brushes also hold a lot of paint. They blend; these blend really, really well. So as I said, I'm not worrying about how pretty this is going on. You see how much ground I'm covering? I'm covering a lot of ground considering uh, all of the carving. So I was talking about why did I not use Slick Stick? I just knew I didn't need it. But when it's real shiny like this, if you do this, you'll notice that the paint kind of pulls away. So one way to alleviate that is pounce. If you've got a super shiny par surface, this is um, tip number two. Tip number one was French tip for heavy carving. Trip, uh, tip number two, if you have a slick surface, pounce. Pound your paint, especially for your first coat. You can brush paint, uh, you can uh, brush, use brush strokes for your second coat. Pouncing is really very, uh, it's kind of the equivalent of spraying. If you think about it, if you spray paint on, it just sort of goes there and lands in that spot, like it hits the spot and it just lands and then levels out, right? Well, Dixie Belle has self-leveling properties in it, which is why it's a paint that, that dries with uh, very, very few visible brush strokes. Even if you don't use water, if you use water with it, it really levels out. Um, so if you pounce, you're sort of delivering the paint in one spot versus brushing, you're rubbing the paint in different directions. Does that make sense? So I love, I love, love, love doing a pounce. Y'all, let me know if I end up out of the camera view because I'm gonna be moving y'all around a little bit as I move. So I've already covered all of this area. I've left those holes. I'm not gonna worry about the holes right now. And then something else I'm gonna tell you is, when you're painting carved things, you need to always check from the top and the bottom and the left and the right. So once I finish this and I'm sitting in, a, sitting in a chair, when I stand up, I'm gonna see all sorts of yellow that I didn't cover. And then when I move to the right and look, I'm gonna see all sorts of yellow that I didn't cover. So you need to do like a circle around a clock and make sure that you've got all your angles covered. It's just, it's just part of the pain of having um, a heavily heavily carved piece, but my gosh, they are so beautiful, aren't they? They're just gorgeous. So my plan is not to make this solid antebellum blue. My plan is my, my client who, or my friend, my friend, Facebook family girl, Nina, who is, uh, who's purchased the bed, she really, really, really likes cobalt blue. So we're gonna be adding some cobalt blue highlights, a little bit of the mermaid tail. She's also in Florida, you guys, so um, I just think it's sort of cool that we're using mermaid tail and we're using beachy colors, and it's also got the shell. Look, it has the shell motif at the top, um, even kind of in the middle. I know this color is beautiful, so I'm gonna move it over here just a little bit, so we'll move over. Um, so someone asked a question, more antebellum blue looks more green but on photos it looks this color too it's a very teal color it's 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 i'm gonna show you here look it's a it's a i believe it to me it's a i i would call it a blue with a heavy heavy green tint in it a very heavy green tint but it is a blue 
but it is to me it is a true it's a true teal that's how I see it all right so pouncing on slick surfaces that's gonna save your butt you're gonna thank me later if you've never pounced see how I'm pouncing on that surface now is this over here is two coats this other side over here is two coats so it's definitely gonna need two coats now I'm not too worried about what we think we're gonna do here with this highlighted center but I am gonna leave it alone I'm not gonna touch it this one's not been blended out at all it looks like a peacock feather right now um, and which is kind of funny because this is actually a very much like a peacock blue but I'm just not too worried about it right now. I'm not going to make any decisions about this area until I end up getting the entire thing base coated. Who can think with all this yellow screaming at me? You know, who can, who can really think? Um, to me, you got to get it co covered in a base coat or a base coat primer at least so you can sort of plan your idea better. Uh, who's going to, oh, okay, I know I wanted to tell y'all some things. So who's going to be in Florida? Who's going to be in Florida? I just painted a coffee table in Annabelle and Blue for my sister. I use Cosmo. I love Cosmo Rose on it. I love, love, love. And you used some Leopard too. You did. I, I love that. I did that on that gray, uh, my gray dresser. I used the uh, Lush, Lush Florals with uh, Leopard. And I'm actually teaching a class in Florida um, in Fort Myers Beach the week after the Dixie Bell. It's a week. It's next week. Next week. So I leave in two days for the Dixie Bell workshop, um, retailers uh, workshop that we're having in Tampa. And then uh, after that, I go and I teach next Tuesday and Wednesday. If anyone is near Fort Myers Beach, we would love to have y'all uh, teaching there. And we're actually using, I believe we're using, I believe we're using Cosmic Roses. Or no, we're using Lush Florals and the Cheetah transfers, I believe. Yes. I know, Amy, hi, honey. Uh, Jamie, we're, I'm going to be in Fort Myers Beach, uh, and it's open to the public. It's open to anyone. We'd love for you to come. It's a two-day workshop. It's a Tuesday and Wednesday workshop. It's a bring your own piece, like a small piece. Come and bring a friend. It's my second year there. It is so much fun. We've had such, it's such a good time. It's a Dixie Bell retailer that owns the shop, Salty Dog, uh, Salty Dog Gifts and Gallery, her Gallery and Gifts, I think is the name of the, her shop, and she is a retailer. Uh, anyway, then what I wanted to tell you, oh, you're in the panhandle, Jamie. Oh, okay, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of far, kind of far. Um, then at the end of the month, I'm supposed to be going to Arizona. Do I have anyone from Arizona on here? I'm just going to, I'm just going to outright ask. Anyone from Arizona watching tonight? I want to know. There is a Dixie Bell retailer who has a beautiful shop in, uh, I believe, is it called Peoria, Arizona? I think it's near Surprise. Um, you have heard of Salty Dog? Well, maybe through Dixie Bell, maybe because she's a Dixie Bell retailer. retailer. Um, anyway, Deborah Bucher Designs is supposed to be sponsoring and uh, hosting a, not sponsoring, but hosting a workshop that I'm teaching at at the end of March, but we haven't had enough people to sign up. Um, I mean, I know it's still several weeks away, but um, she's getting kind of nervous and I'm getting kind of nervous and I don't know, is anyone from Arizona here? Melissa, oh, who's, who, who else is? Jenny, Jenny, can you come join us? We would love you guys. Can y'all grab some friends and go, Melissa? Hi, honey, y'all home from the meet? Uh, Melissa, we may not be having it, huh? We have not had, uh, I mean, I'm just being real. I'm just going to put it right out there. We haven't had enough people sign up. I mean, it's like very few people. Our, our goal was to have 30 people, um, and we got a long way to go. So I told her I would just mention it on my lives. I've been advertising about it. Um, it's a two-day, it's two-and-a-half day, actually. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's the last, I believe it's the last weekend of the month. I think it's March March 22nd or something like that. Peoria. Oh, there you are. Thank you is where we're holding it. Pam, I was telling them we got to get people there. I told them we don't have enough signed up. And where are my Arizona people? Where are they? We want you there. Um, it's Friday. They are Friday. We're doing an icebreaker with uh, wine and hors d'oeuvres. And then Saturday, there's a uh, Saturday and Sunday, there's a catered lunch. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty fancy schmancy event. Okay, right here. 
I'm going to move this down a little bit. Wish you would come to the Expo Center in Knoxville. Doesn't that sound fun? That sounds fun. So please, 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 Pam, I don't know if you're on right now. Oh, Jenny. Okay. Pam, are you or Deborah on that you can share that link? Um, Jenny, when this live is over, if no one is able to share that link for you, when this live is over, I will go back and message you the, or put it, I'll put the link in here. Um, oh, I know. Jasmine, you can do it. Jasmine, will you do it? Jasmine, will you, can you jump over to my Tracy's Fancy page and uh, go to my website, tracysfancy.com and go to my Create Boldly Tour and choose the Arizona Workshop and copy that link and post it in. <laughs> Do you mind doing that, Jasmine? Just a little bit of work, a little bit of extra work here. Okay, so I'm about to show you my next tip, okay? We're gonna move on. So y'all have watched me pounce. I'm gonna let this dry. We haven't finished, obviously, the whole thing, but I don't want you to get bored with this, so. Here we go. So now I'm going to do, wait, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then I'm going to move on to my next tip. Now, if I were out here by myself, y'all, I just lose myself in this part right here. I just lose myself. Um, yeah, Melissa's coming. I know, Melissa, I was so looking forward. I, I really, 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 really want this to work. I just think we need a little bit more time. I know that the Florida workshop um, in Fort Myers Beach, people didn't sign up until the last hot second. Like we, we still have people signing up right now. So I sent her a message today and said, hey, did people sign up in the last few weeks? And she was supposed to get back with me, but I know that's the case. I know that people are just waiting till the last minute. Okay, so next tip, I'm gonna put this brush aside and I'm gonna pick up just a little cheap artist brush. This is just a brush from Yay, looky there, look at Jasmine. Jasmine, I owe you a drink, okay? I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, will I be, Jasmine, are you going? Do I get to hug your neck? Surely you're gonna be at the workshop, right? Um, uh, surely I'll be seeing you in two days. Not tomorrow, but Friday, woo -hoo! Um. Okay, I don't know who's saying this, who's saying this? Lauren, coming to Lizzie, I promise y'all would have a good amount of fish. Girl, Lauren, I will go back to look at what you're saying, I promise, when this video is over, okay? I promise, promise. Because I'm not gonna push that more button because the last time I pushed more, the whole video flipped. And then I had to do my video like sideways like this for the rest of the night. Robin, we are. I just wanna tell you about my brush. So I just set that brush down because we've been painting. So now I picked up this brush because I'm giving you tip number three. So tip number four, pouncing on a slick surface. Um, three is to use a brush like this right here, a one inch artist brush, and just use it to get in all of these small places, okay? So all of these areas like this. Now sometimes like this carving is really deep in there and I can't even get to it from this side. So I will have to eventually turn this headboard around. Um, let me bring you in here. Can you see, it's really difficult to use even the French tip brush or, uh, and I don't, I don't go sparingly. I get a lot of paint on here. I get a lot of paint, a lot. And I just put it in there and I just start letting it swim around. I just move it all around up in there. I want it to cover it really, really well. I would prefer not to have to go back in every single hole and do a second coat inside. So I put a lot of paint on my brush and I just get in there and I just cover it. I give it a, I just give it a bath in that paint, every single little hole. Now, if you've got a piece that has even, look at that, see that, that tiny little hole, this brush isn't even gonna do it. I'm gonna have to get like an even tinier artist brush to get in there. So that's my next tip. And I know that some of you may think, well, that's a tip, but I'm gonna tell y'all there are people who will fight and fight with these holes with a big brush and they won't just stop and think, just, you know what, go get a smaller brush. Or you know what else you can use? Your finger. You can just use your finger and put your finger in there. Um, you can also use Q-tips to get in small areas. I'm, I'm uh, guilty of using all of those things, honestly, is to use a small brush when you're using, when you're painting heavily carved furniture. You'll need it. All right, so what I think we'll do 
is, now obviously I'm just moving on. Like I didn't even finish painting the other side over there. Um, but my other side is dry. Go ahead and break open another jar of paint and add a little bit of color to some areas and see if we like it. If we don't, then we're not gonna do it, but we're gonna see. Um, thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, so this side over here is completely covered. So let me break open, um, let's break open some cobalt blue. Cobalt blue, here we come. All right, so I'm gonna back you guys back up. I'm gonna raise this up and we are gonna move on to cobalt blue. Actually, I'm gonna move you guys completely over here so that you can watch me work on this side as I start to try out some colors. There we go. There we go. Let me get set up here. Get my other French tip brush. Now, when you start using different colors, y'all, just like you watch other brand ambassadors and people blend, you always want a color for every uh, for every paint. I mean, a brush for every paint. Okay, you don't want to. You want to try to use a brush for every single paint. Hey, 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 Miss Sue Walters. Um. Oh, that's awesome, you guys. I love that you guys are talking together. It's really wonderful when you know, it was like a continuous mist. My family's home. I can tell that they fired up something because I start having an internet issue. Uh, looks so much better, not yellow, doesn't it? It really, really does. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to keep some cobalt on the outside and my mermaid tail more in the center. So I think I'm going to add cobalt out here and some mermaid tail in the middle. But I'm not gonna do it real divided up. I'm gonna sort of mix it. I know, Michelle, I know. I don't know, I don't know why. I'm so sorry. I don't know why that's happened. And um, here, I'm gonna go ahead and mist it just a little bit. Got cobalt blue on my brush. I'm gonna start putting this on. And we're gonna obviously deepen this, but I'm gonna be kind of free with it. Wetting it as we go. And remember I said we're gonna do cobalt blue more on the outsides and then we're gonna do tail more towards the center of the motifs. And I'll probably work some cobalt blue in there as well. Just kinda all in here like this. Just moving it around, can y'all see what I'm doing? I really don't have any specific plan, I just know that I wanna work this in here just going with the flow kind of wetting it and stretching that paint as much as i can not worrying about what i've done here in the middle i'm not really worried about that right now that was fun we did that the other night but i'm not sure i'm going to keep it right now i'm just kind of this will be one of those projects where i'll paint and i'll paint and I'll step back and look. And it will not stay this bold. We're gonna bring on some antebellum in just a second. We're gonna put some antebellum right on top of it. I'm used, did y'all notice I've not redipped my brush once? I haven't redipped my brush. Oh yes, Nikki, this is Nikki, hi! Hi, Nikki, that's an old, old friend of mine. Hi, Nikki, it is, honey. I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell. Yes, it's Dixie Bell paint. <laughs> hi, hun. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. How did you find me on here, girl? That's hilarious. Good to see you. I mean, even though I'm not seeing you, just good to see your name. All right, so now I think I'm gonna take my brush. I'm not gonna redip my antebellum blue. I've already got my antebellum here. Yes, the water, so I never, that was one dip. That was one dip of cobalt blue, just one dip. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my antebellum blue and work it back over some of the areas of the cobalt, just to kind of knock it back a little bit, because we're just gonna kind of layer. We're gonna blend and layer. And you know, it's good for you guys to see this because when y'all see me post, when y'all end up see me post about uh, the picture and when you see my, my blog come out on it, you will know what it looks like to begin with and kind of how I got to this point, all right? 
So I am going to dip a little bit more, not much. I mean, I put a tiny, just a tiny, tiny bit here on my brush. And I'm just going to keep covering this right in here. I like where uh, you can see the cobalt blue peeking through. I'm not sure if y'all can see that really well or not. Let me move y'all up. There we go. Sherilyn, are you saying I'm way out of sync? What do you mean? I'm out of sync. Oh, this is really pretty. It's going to be really pretty when I add the mermaid tail to the middle. So do y'all see the layering that's happening right here? Can y'all see that? I think we're finally gaining some traction back. We lost a lot of people there. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and cobalt blue a little bit. Um, Why well, didn't do the end? Let's do the end. Let's do over here on the side. Oh, I love these colors together. This is beautiful. I didn't even need water with that. Follow it with some antebellum blue. All right. I like. So I'm, I don't think I'm liking this, you guys. How do you, what do y'all think? I don't think I'm liking this. I don't think I'm liking it. I think I'm going to cover it up. I think it's distracting. I think I'm going to cover it. Do you want me to say that one more time? I think I'm going to cover it. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not sure. Obviously, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm going to spray it down. I'm going to spray it down. I don't think I like it. We'll just cover it up. That's probably going to need another coat. Yeah, that was too distracting. I think it was distracting from all the other highlights that we're putting on here. Now, remember in the end, you guys, we're going to be highlighting with gold all over. We're oh, yeah, y'all are saying cover it. Okay, you like? I don't have my light on here very well. Where's my camera crew? Where's my camera crew tonight? All right. That's good. So we'll let this dry. And we'll come back and hit it with a little bit of cobalt. So Gary, 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 thank you so much for the suggestion of these two colors together because they are freaking fab. Eulus. Fabulous. So um, let's take this up. Let's go up a little bit. I cannot go all the way over with the middle, y'all, because um, the middle is not dry yet. So let's move this over and turn this like this so you guys can see. I'm going to do this area right there, all right? Um, I can't take it all the way over here because I haven't completed this side, but I'm going to do this right here and sort of do a gradual move. In. So see how I am? I'm here with both my brushes and my mister, all right? Please don't take it that way, Jennifer. I don't know what Jennifer said. <laughs> Jennifer, you're so sweet. I don't know what you said. Um, you're a little bit off, kind of like an old Chinese movie. Oh, <laughs> I would never, ever, ever take that as rude, girl. I don't know. That's got to be like an internet glitchy thing. I don't know. I don't know, but I do know that I'm going to raise the slide up. I do know that. And I, t I totally know what you're talking about. Like a King Kong show, you know? I know what you mean. All right. But I want to get this where y'all can at least watch what I'm doing. Okay? So, I've got my cobalt blue. I'm going to go ahead and brush this on. Right over the top. Get in there kind of deep. So we're using cobalt blue over the antebellum blue. And we're just preparing to go into mermaid, which is going to be up here in this in the seashell area. Heavy. Love, 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 love it. I'm going to give it a spray. See if I can carry it a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That gave us some staying power. We can go a little bit further. All right, now I'm going to take my antebellum brush and I'm going to work over the top of that. 
Just knocking it back. All I'm doing is knocking back that cobalt just a little bit. Just a little. All right, so let's bring in another color. Let's go ahead and bring, oh my gosh, this is so pretty. All right, so we're gonna bring in Mermaid Tail and we're gonna do, actually I think I'm gonna take cobalt in. So I'm gonna take cobalt into this area and then I will add Mermaid Tail over it. I'm gonna do it a little bit lighter, not quite as heavy. Leave an antebellum as my deep, oh, I gotta see what time it is. Oh, 20 tail, okay. I know y'all can't see me, but that's not necessary. This is at least letting y'all see how I'm doing this. And letting you know that I had, you know, no set plan at all. When you do lots of blending and stuff like this, you just kinda have to go with it. Go with what you're feeling. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna take my antebellum brush. I'm gonna dip it a little bit, just a tad. I'm not gonna add any water. And I'm just going to do like a light dry brush over the top of it. What we call it? Knocking it back. Knocking back that blue. And now we are even. I want it to get nice and dry. And that's the really good thing about these French tip brushes. Uh, they really suck up that water as well. And you're, it seems like your, your finish is drier fast. If, when you're doing like highlighting and dry brushing, that's really helpful. Now, if you're doing a lot of heavy blending, you obviously want more water. But, wow, dang, that looks good. Okay, so let me open up. Um, this here is my mermaid tail. Uh, I need to go get another brush. So hold tight. I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I don't have um, another French tip brush. So I just went and grabbed my, this is called uh, Round Large. It's my Round Large Dixie Belle wooden handle. This is a synthetic, but I'm just gonna add my um, mermaid tail with that, okay? Because I only have two French tip brushes. <laughs> I know, it looks so good, Melissa, I totally agree. Doesn't it look amazing? Okay, so now this, this mermaid tail is pretty bright. Um, Let's show you. This is Mermaid Tail. It's very, very bright. I'm going to put some on a brush here. See? It's bright. So I want to put that on, but I'm going to kind of knock some of that off on the edge. I want it just to be really light on the end of my brush. And let's see if we like it. If we don't, it's okay. But I wanted it to be kind of just middle, right here in the middle. Um, and then the rest of the bed will get heavier. But I wanted to highlight just this center area right here and I'll go back in and knock this off too. Knock it back as we said as well but that looks really good though. Man, Nina are you still on? This is looking amazing. I really like it. Y'all see that? Can y'all see that good enough? Sometimes, y'all, when you've got just a little bit in your lid, like that's not even anything worth painting, right? It would never drip. But when you just want to use a dry brush, it's, it, you can just tap your, your lid just to get the little bit that you want. We may not knock this back. I don't really think I need to. I think it's highlighting really well on its own. Bringing out the, bringing out the carvings here. Well, Gary, 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 Gary from Molly's Creations. Thank you for this because I like it. This isn't dry enough down here at the bottom, but if it were, I would be taking this all the way down onto this bottom shell motif that's down here in the bottom as well. But I haven't added my blue. I haven't done cobalt into that area yet. So really this area right here is the only area that is, is what it will look like. And then, of course, we still have to work on that center area that I've covered up that look like a peacock spot. So, what do you guys think? So, keep, um, keep your eye out. I'm trying to think if I will, before I fly out on Friday morning for Florida, 
Um, so keep your eye out on my page, of course. I'll be posting as soon as I finish. If I have time to finish it tomorrow, I certainly will um, and try to get it posted, oh, sorry, before I leave town. Otherwise, it'll be after I get back from Florida. And um, if you are in the Florida area and you can come see us at the Fort, My Fort Myers Beach Workshop, we would love to have you there. If you're in the Arizona, Arizona area, we would love to see, see you at Deborah Buker Designs. You can go to my uh, website at tracysfancy.com and look at my Create Boldly Tour where I'm gonna be um, ac across the country for uh, the next few months. And I have a surprise coming for you guys with Dixie Bell. Those of you that follow us here at Dixie Bell, um, we have something called um, one Day Whimsy. I'm, this is the first time I've said it out loud. It's called One Day Whimsy. Just keep that in your mind. Hashtag One Day Whimsy. I'm going to start dropping little hints. I'm not going to tell you what it's about, but trust me, they've never done anything like this with Dixie Bell. I am super excited. We've been talking about it for about a year and a half. Um, it will involve someone, one of you. It will involve one of you and uh, me and in person in a very, a place you know really well. So keep your ears out, hashtag one day whimsy, okay? I'll tell you more, a little bit more each week until they tell me that I can announce it, but that was my very first tease. Ah, that was fun, that was a lot of fun. So uh, I hope you guys learned a little bit tonight from just the few tips that we did. And thank y'all for sticking around and uh, being so patient with this headboard. And um, if y'all have any questions, shoot me a message. And Jasmine, thank you for being with me tonight. And we'll see some of y'all very, very, see some of y'all in just like two days, I'll be hugging your necks, okay? All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Y'all have a good night and stay warm. Bye-bye.